Don here in Florida and today we're going to make some leveling feet for the Monarch 10 E, and I think this will be a lot of fun. Okay uh, I've already started on the project. I've picked up some stuff and, and did a little bit turning. Uh, what I did was I made up these these T's here and is I'm going to put a hole down in here with a, uh, a, a cradle in the bottom and I'm going to have a bolt and I've already made a prototype this is not exactly to dimensions but uh, this will this will be uh, contoured at the bottom like a ball and it'll sit down in there to allow it to move back and forth slightly it doesn't have to move that much but I want that foot to be able to to adjust to the floor if it's slightly out and I know mine is I've got a, I got a three inch diameter here, so that spreads the footprint out quite a lot. Once it's set up and uh, put together, we'll raise the, initially we'll raise the uh, lathe about two inches up with this on top as well. We'll raise it a, up two inches and above that point will be an adjustment to level it. Uh, I want the shafts long enough so that as I screw this up this way, I can get that lathe approximately three and a half to four inches off the ground. I think I measured it, uh, it'll be closer to four and a quarter, I think, when done. And this will allow me to raise it up over my pallet jack height. My pallet jack is three and a quarter. And it'll get it up over a four inch block if, if need be, in case I need to, to put that in a crate or something. So it, it'll give me the ability to, to move it up to uh, service it, whatever I need to do, once I'm set up so that I'm not having to bend over too much on that yes. lathe. This T comes through a hole in the casting of the lathe. There's three holes in that casting. That casting is an inch thick. So that that will come through to about here. And I'm, we're gonna turn this into a hex so that we have a turning point here. So as this sits down inside the base, we can turn this from top side rather than trying to get under the lathe and turn that up to where we need it. Now I want to make this as smooth and easy as possible so the idea is to reduce as much friction as can be. So what I did was I bought these thrust uh, bearings and washers which will sit on here like this and the casting on the bottom side is actually really smooth I felt it so that washer will sit on the casting like that and now that'll allow for it to turn very easily. That, that's a bearing, that turns very easily. And I'm gonna single point thread the, the shafts that come up through there and polish those threads out so that they turn just as easy as possible. Is I'm gonna put a flat right here on this ball so that when this inserts down in, I can have a set screw that I can run in this way that will come up against that flat and keep this from turning. So let's say this does start to bind when I'm turning it, it will come up against the flat on that ball and keep the shaft from turning without having to get under here with a wrench. And the other thing it'll do is if I do lift it up, it will hold that foot along with it. So if I, if I want that foot to be out of there, I literally have to take that set screw out or take the whole uh, unit out to make it uh, come out. These pieces here I've already done. I. Uh, got ahead of myself and meant to get some footage of putting those together but it, it's just basically some uh, I forget what that was I don't know if that was thick wall tubing no it was solid that was some solid that I had and I uh, bored it and then on the other end I uh, tapped it so it's only tapped up about one inch the rest of it is is uh, clearance so it's clearance all the way down to there before you hit the threads because I, I don't need to be fighting a ton of threads and, and an inch worth of threads is, is more than enough. Uh, this was a piece of um, stock that I had that I cut off. I bored that and I inserted it in, welded it here and here and then turned it flat on the, uh, the lathe uh, to make everything concentric and even. And I should have waited because after I got that all turned I, I realized, oh crap, I want to put a hex on here and now that one won't fit into my collet block so I can't put it in the lathe or into the uh, mill and uh, so what I had to do was I, I made basically a collet block to do this 
And I had some hex drop sitting over there in the corner. Got, got a bunch of this hex for some reason. And so I just cut off a piece of hex and put a, an, a uh, grub screw in there. And it, it fits on there really tight. So it's not like we're going to throw off the dimensions. I mean, there's no perceptible movement in there when I do that. So this is going to be my collet block for the meantime. The only thing I don't like about this setup is that the the diameter of this round right here is larger than the hex. So I'm going to have to use this sitting into the jaws this way, which I really don't like doing. But we're going to do it and we're going to be careful. And uh, we're going to build our hexes on here. So let's go on over to the mill. I'm going to spin up. I probably should have changed the belt, sped it up just a little bit, but it seems to be doing all right. A little chunky, but... We'll just take it slow. And what we'll have when we get done, because these are going to be the um, screws that actually lift the lathe up and down, um, we'll have balls down at this end. So we'll have a ball end that will fit into a socket in the foot. And these will simply screw up and down like this and lift the lathe up and down. And I'll bring that up and lock it on zero. I'm just bringing it down here for a quick look. I like to mark my my uh, zero with a blue mark right there so I know it. But I also have a red mark here so when I'm spinning this dial back, when I'm moving right along, I can pick that up real quick and hit it right on the zero. My, uh, my thread dial here, I also have marked it blue and blue so it's easier to see. with my thread gauge and it looks like we're spot on with the 20. Coming up on my mark and now. It's one thing I can say about the uh, 10 double E. My goodness, it, it's probably the nicest single point thread machine I've ever used. I really do enjoy this machine. And out. And let's take a quick look and see how we're doing here. Let's see if we can start a thread on there. Oh yeah, just like that. And that'll do it. All right, let me go get the next one done. Uh, we got to get these uh, billets uh, made in the feet, so let's get that done. clockwork no no movement back or forth this way but it allows it to to wobble this way that'll give us the, the angle we need as the foot cants off a little bit so I think that's gonna work so we're gonna take this piece here and we know it sits down in there and it goes in there nicely and we're gonna take our caliper here and clean it and we're going to get right on that lip right there and go down in there and measure 
how deep that lip is right there. Uh, three, point three one three five. Yeah, now, what we want to do is we want to take a quarter inch. We want to make a quarter inch flat on here, right there. So let me get a quarter inch on here. Point two five. Point two five, right there. And we'll add that, but we're gonna split it in half because what we're talking about here is the hole. So if the if this if this width here is 0.25, we want that to be halfway up and down the 0.25 with this with this number 10 screw. That'll allow it to when it comes in, if you imagine it coming in this way with a flat right here, it'll allow it to move up and down slightly this way. And that's important because as this cans over it's going to run into that screw so we're going to try to avoid that and uh, so we want to kind of get it dead center in the middle of that 0.250 and then with the flat there the screw can turn left to right this way but it'll again meet with a barrier which will keep so we'll go ahead and get our trusty scale here and uh, turn it on. numbers we're dealing with here and I think that's going to be close enough Use a little Loctite to make sure that they don't vibrate or move around. That's in the position I want them set at. So that's going to be foot number three. So let's go on over here. And all I'll do is just scribe that. Go in the hole. I want to reach for the bottom of that hole. So I'll go in like that. I'll reach for the bottom of that hole. Like that. And let's see if we can get a little scribe mark on there. And yes, we did right there so I'm hoping I'm getting that in the frame and we'll get our measuring device here and yes that's just over a quarter of an inch so that came out just right next order of business is we're going to set up the mill again for these so that we can cut a flat onto them and that should be the last mechanical operation for these feet if I'm not forgetting anything so let me go get set up there. Um, we're gonna create a flat right on here. It's gonna be a quarter inch wide and it's gonna be uh, 0.161 deep. And that's what we need to uh, keep it the actual width of the stud so that we don't take too much out. So this one went to this one. We're doing these individually. That would sit in there like that and this screw, let's make sure that that fits right. You know, the the, uh, the levels can be really finicky. You can really pass where you want to be too quickly. So I, I want as fine a thread as possible anyway. So the lathe, its foot will basically sit down over, or the, the casting sit right down over that like this. And then from the top side, you'll be able to get on there like this and turn it up and down to where you want it. Um, looking back at the feet here, uh, we coated them with that uh, that uh, flex seal and it made a really nice hard rubber coating. I barely dig my finger into it. Uh, this, this side we didn't bother to coat, that sticks up. But the bottom and the sides, they're nice and hard, they're rubbery feeling, they got a good tack to them, they're not gonna slide. One foot I've already put together and put on the on the lathe and it, it seems to be working out excellent. A couple things I did um, since I've been off camera is I grooved the T-nuts here, grooved them out to accept a snap ring which we'll put on the top. Um, this will allow me if I go to move the lathe to uh, keep the foot from sliding out of the base so that that uh, they're not catching and grabbing on the floor when I try to move it. So that was just kind of a, a last minute decision that I did. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a nice big old glob of grease down in here. Um, not so much as for lubricant, with lubricant's always nice, because once the foot is placed, I mean, this isn't gonna move around. It's not gonna require uh, grease. Mainly it's for rust prevention. So we're gonna get that, that nut, that bolt down in there, like that. So I'm facing the flat towards me because the end of the bolt is going into that flat. So 
I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Loctite on here and get my Allen wrench and we're going to run that in there. And that Loctite will hold that bolt once I have it placed where I want it. See how it straightened up when I made contact? I'm going to go back and forth to make sure it's locking. I'm going to put it at this angle here. Now, I don't want this rigid up and down. I want it to be able to move. So I'm going to back off that, that lock bolt till it just comes back and makes contact with the side of the foot. This allows it to move whichever direction. So that should give it plenty of movement right there to move back and forth to, to allow the foot to set flat on the floor. And it allows it to pick up the foot as well. And if the T-nut should jam, it'll lock in place. I'm gonna take a little bit more grease here. I'm going to grease the threads on the inside of the T-nut here. And that's just so that the threads on the bolt get lubricated, don't seize up, rust on me at a later date. And then uh, my race, I wanna race. On top of that, I don't want that that bearing, that thrust bearing running on on the surface of the nut itself. It's smooth. I mean, it probably wouldn't hurt it because it's not something that's going to be run constantly. Um, it just moves it into position, and that's that. So there we go. And, of course, some lubricant. When I started making adjustment on that one foot on the end here, when I was experimenting with it, it, it really turned nice. It was, I got a feeling it's gonna be the, the sweetest height adjustment setup I've had on any piece of equipment by the time I get done. Um, and then of course the last race. So right there, we're good to go. Um, so here I have my feet. On this end, we use two feet here and here. This is to balance it uh, forward to back like this. All right. So we're back. This is the, uh, the modification we made to this uh, foot here. We turned down this diameter right here on the T-nut. There's actually an area in the casting where it comes right around this point and the larger diameter wouldn't fit up in there and allow it to, to purchase straight on. I found there was also some casting on the other side that was doing the same thing. So I did the same thing. I took that one out and I redid it, and it actually added a little bit of space there when I did. And get this adjusted. This should be the end of it. There we go. We're gonna, we're gonna slide it down beyond, and then pull it into place. Well, that might work right there. She's sitting on her own feet for the first time. I should be able to use a ratchet wrench to make the adjustment. That turns easy. That turns easy. That just that just turns slick as I'll get out. So we're gonna turn the level on here, and then we're gonna drop that in down. Ah, you're almost there. Get that. We're like right there, one tenth of a degree. Come on now. Now it's on zero. There we go. It's right on zero that way. So we're going to stick right with that. Let's double check this. Zero one. Yeah. So she's staying right where she needs to be. We're gonna call that good and level. I'm happy now that the, uh, the lathe is leveled. I'm gonna put it back together and start using it here on another project today. So with that, from Florida, Don out.